Hi guys, I've got another plug and play to review. This one is apparently called Something Gamer. I think that's what it says. Either way, I don't know what the top of this would have said because I actually ordered this from China and it came in a box that was like this. So in order to make room in the box, they cut off the top of it. I guess we'll never know what that was supposed to be. But anyways, yeah, pretty standard plug and play. Let's take it apart now. Away. Anyways, it's pretty standard, not very comfortable. Well, yeah, that's okay. Uh, one of the weird things is that instead of analog nubs like a usual PS2 controller, this one has start and select right there. So that's pretty interesting. Um, X, Y, B, A. The B, A, that's actually really uncommon because usually on systems that try to mimic, like, you know, Super Nintendo controls or anything, they'll instead make it A, B. And you even saw that, I think, on the last one. They do that just because it seems a little bit more intuitive, and I guess that way they're not, you know, copying Nintendo. But that's pretty interesting when they have BA right there. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, reset, of course. Uh, on pretty much every Famicom console, when you press reset, that's just a hard reset. So that way you could get back to the menu for the games. Um, and then, uh, just in case you guys forgot, I mean, we all get forgetful. Uh, it also tells you up down, left, right. You know, just in case you guys forgot, they went ahead and added it right there. Such a nice touch, you know? But not such a nice touch, and the most infuriating thing for me is when they have this D-pad, which is split up into four different buttons. Why do they do that? I don't know. That's as if you were controlling it like this. Ugh. Very, very frustrating. But, um, either way, the D-pad doesn't feel that bad. It's not sharp or anything. It... It's alright. Um, there's no real branding on this thing. Uh, it says it was made in 2010. But, uh, then it has these right here. I don't know what these are. They're not buttons, I'll tell you that. I don't know if they're holding the thing together or what. Who knows. And then, of course, if you can't tell by now, um, the output on this, it's video and audio. And, of course, just one, so everything is in mono. But, oh well, not too bad. I'll get into the games right here in just a sec. First off, though, I wish I hadn't thrown this away. All right, here are the games that it has. And also, this is not glare from the light or anything. This isn't glare. This is just a part of this design. It's it's part of the graphics, okay? It's Bloom. <laughs> but um, a lot of these, these names are pretty cool. It has two sets right here, according to it. Set A and set B. And... Um, it doesn't tell me how I select the sets, though. I guess maybe with the select button when you turn it on? I don't know. Um, either way, so there's set A and set B, and some of these really interest me, so of course I'm going to get to them. But with 36 games in each, there's no way I'm going to be able to get to all of them. So I'm just going to cover a few of them in this episode. And uh, if there are some that... Excuse me. If there are some that you guys really want to see... Uh, let me know in the comments, and then that way I'll make a follow-up episode just with your guys' suggestions of what you want to take a look at. So I'm going to try to focus right there so that way you guys can see what's going on here. Uh, there are a few of them that I definitely, definitely want to look at. Like, for instance, Rockman. Uh, Rockman, of course, for those who don't know, that's what Mega Man is called in Japan. And because it has rock music to it. But... Um, Anyways, I definitely want to try that. If that's Mega Man, that is going to be really, really cool. It probably justifies the price of actually buying this thing. Um, some of the names are really strange here, like Little Hag. Um, what else? Uh, uh, just some of these are strange. Mars Man, I wonder what that's about. Uh, uh, some of these are Tiny Toon. I wonder if that's Tiny Toon Adventures on NES. Maybe I'm just getting my hopes up too much, but if it has those two, Rockman and Tiny Toon Adventures, that is probably going to offset the cost of getting this whole thing, because those are two incredibly good games. Uh, oh, and then there's Russia the game, of course. I mean, everybody knows that one, right? Um, Anti-SARS? Oh, man. But wait, it's on there twice! I just noticed this, look. Number four, Anti-SARS on set A. Set B? Anti-SARS, number four. What? Oh, wow. Space War. 
if that is what I think it is, that's going to be interesting because Space War, for those who don't know, that is one of the first video games ever. It is this little uh, versus type of thing. I think it's either, you know, versus a human or versus computer. This thing is so old that, Space War, I mean, that game is so old that it existed before joysticks even existed. So you would have to use buttons to steer your ship, either left, right, thrust, whatever. And so you would have to, and also shoot, you know, your little missile or laser, whatever. And so you would have the ship, and right in the middle was a sun, and that, that was like a gravity point. So your ship was drawn to that, but you kind of had to manipulate thrust and, you know, your direction and everything. So that way you could try to shoot the other guy. And if it has that, if that's the same thing, that's going to be really cool. Um, uh, what else? Oh, I got a feeling some of you are going to like this. Pikachu, spelled P-K-A-C-H-U. That is interesting. Oh, oh, look at this. Conti NG. Uh, Conti Energy. There we go. That is, uh, that was on the last plug and play that we had. Oh, oh Bitha. It has Bitha on there as well. Um, yeah, those two we saw them last time on the, uh, on the first plug and play that we had. Uh, yeah, some of these, some of these are going to be strange. Blob Man. Either way, let's get into this already. And again, any of them that I didn't get to, let me know which ones interest you, and I'll make a follow-up episode, which will go ahead and take a look at those. I'm back, and unfortunately, it is not with good news, because my device only has set A on there. I've tried every combination, and I cannot get set B to pull itself up on mine. So that makes me think that maybe, maybe my console only has set A, and there's another device or another model of this that has set B. So I think that, yeah, yeah, this, just go ahead and this whole thing right here, just chuck it away. Because, yeah, we only get set A on this, so these are the only games I could look at. And unfortunately, you know what, I noticed that a lot of these are actually the same. For instance, uh, let's see, 19, Overlord is the same, uh, Trooper, Atomic, uh, 24 and 25 are the same, Bitha, 27, that's the same, Diamond and Dice right after that, those are the same, Coin Tetris, also the same, so you see a lot of these repeat. Um, I, I think that's Rogue, R-O-G-E, Raga, I, I have no clue how they, how they intend to pronounce that, Tank is the same. And then even on this side, uh, Lucky Ball is the same, Hurry Burry, the same. Um, just a lot of these, they're just bolt action. Uh, oh, wait, <laughs> I didn't even notice this. Maybe they are different games. <laughs> Look, there's bowl action and bowl taction. So maybe, maybe I'll never know what, how different bowl taction was from bowl action. Um, but either way, yeah, uh, we're not going to be able to see set B, so unfortunately we've only got this right here. And, um, either way, let's look at what we got, let's see if we can find anything interesting. As you're going to see with a lot of these plug-in plays, they have parts of them that don't really make a lot of sense. With this one, when you turn it on, it starts off with a helicopter gunship for some reason. The first game that I tried out was Tiny Toon. Unfortunately, this one has nothing to do with Tiny Toon's adventures on the NES. You're some sort of a cat-tiger looking thing. The enemies, I can't even tell what they are. Some of them look like dinner plates. This game is like a bad trip, and I don't want to be stuck in it. Next, I tried out Bolide. This seems to be a ripoff of maybe Akari Warriors, or maybe Gorilla. It's actually not a bad game. It's got a lot of action to it. I actually do like this one. There's Infinite Continues. You just start off from where you died, so that's pretty nice. Also, it appears that you're playing Che Guevara, and Player 2 is Fidel Castro. But then again, this thing doesn't have a player too, so I don't know what's going on right there. The game also seems to have some level and story progression, which is pretty impressive for this type of game. Next we have Space War, or no, excuse me, Space War 3. So yeah, unfortunately this one it's nothing like the original Space War that I predicted it would be. But that might be a good thing, because this game is actually an almost perfect copy of a game called Gunnack. Gunnack is one of the best shoot 'em ups I've ever played, so it's actually a very welcome surprise to have this here. The game is becoming very hard to find, and it's very expensive. However, I've seen this game on other plug and plays as well, so it's not that special, but even so, it's very nice to have what I think is one of the best shoot 'em ups ever made. Next, we have Anti SARS. This might be the only game I've ever seen that's named after a real life health scare. 
The game is just a ripoff of Dr. Mario, so really it's just a pill popper simulator. I've never been a fan of the game, and I'm not a fan of this version either. Next, I tried Harry Tour. This is a shoot 'em up that's based on Harry Potter. I'm not a big fan of the Harry Potter series, so I don't really know what's going on, and it just seems like a generic shooter to me. I'll pass. Next, we have Firmanent. This game is a clone of Gradius. And it's not a bad clone, it's actually pretty good. Unfortunately though, I'm not a fan of Gradius. This one's okay, if you really like Gradius, you would probably like it. But for me, I've never liked its power-up structure. And for a shoot 'em up I find that it's really slow-paced. It's nice that they have it here though, they could have done a lot worse. Next we have Bicycle Race. This is the exact same game as Space Race as we saw in the other episode. Complete with glitches and all. I've gotta give some credit where credit's due though. For being a Super Hang-On clone, this is pretty inventive. Still, if you played one, you've played them all. Next, I tried Undersea. This is just a ripoff of Bomberman. We've seen it before, we've seen them all, goodbye. After that, I tried Lucky Ball. And this is another clone of that 8-bit pinball game. Are you guys starting to see a pattern here? This one is slightly different than the other pinball game we saw in the previous episode. Mainly, it might be the only game I've ever seen that makes reference to the human centipede. Next, I tried out Conti Energy. I was expecting this one to be exactly like the one that we saw in the previous episode, but surprisingly, this one actually has a two-player mode and even a level editor. I might try and make something with that someday, and that might be the only reason for me to come back to this thing. Next, I tried ROG, or Rogue Brothers once you get to it. This is a ripoff of the original Mario Brothers, but you fight against cats for some reason. The controls are terrible, and the whole thing feels like it was rushed. I'd play more of this, but I don't want to tarnish the good memories I have of Mario Brothers. And lastly, I tried Atomic Blast. I didn't know what to do in this one, it seemed like the level just went on forever. But now that I'm looking back at my footage, I think this is a copy of Defender. Either way, I could barely tell what's going on, and I think my life is a lot better without a bad Defender clone in it. So overall, I've gotta say this is a terrible device. I really didn't think that they were gonna be designed so soon. Because, I mean, like I said in the first video, some of them, they produce like, you know, 2001 game console and all this stuff. And like I said, a lot of those are just clone, um, clone games, uh, you know, right after the other, you know, 40 different versions of original Super Mario and, you know, Contra and everything. But I didn't expect that they were going to be, you know, this dishonest, you know, with just their packaging. I really didn't expect that. And I mean, it doesn't say anywhere. Again, I mean, it's cut off, but... It, it didn't give any indication that, you know, you only get set A or set B. I don't know, maybe there aren't any consoles that have set B to them. But, either way, this is really a junk console because, like I said, the D-pad, it's passable, but I still hate the four-button D-pad just on principle. Really, I don't, I didn't really see any games on here that really stood out to me as being worth it. So this one was definitely not worth it, and it just shows you how dishonest and and just how bad these companies can be with these plug-and-plays. Either way, let me know if there's any on that list, this list right here, um, for set A. Let me know if there's any games that you guys want to see. Send me some requests, so then I'll make a follow-up video and show you some of those games, okay? Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.